four-cylinder 22R engine. Watch this. This is the hill right here. This carburetor, no, the, the original carburetor and the OEM carburetor, the brand new one we put on there, we're doing 55 miles an hour right here, accelerating up the hill. So this is a extremely steep hill. I don't know if the camera does it justice, but uh, we're, we're coming up on traffic here because we're doing 60 miles an hour. Um, just fantastic hill climbing ability. That was only having, I haven't gone over half throttle yet. AMCA concourse judge for motorcycles and somewhat of an expert on these Toyotas and I'll tell you a little bit about that. I've been driving Toyotas since 1981 when I was 16 years old. I always had a small Toyota Hilux pickup and later graduated up to a Tundra which I just sold. Uh, we just dumped a lot of money into the museum and uh, needed to sell my prized Tundra so we auctioned that off for $32,500. And the next thing up to go, I was hoping I could keep it, is this absolutely gorgeous original 1987. Toyota pickup. This is was owned by an 80 year old guy who bought it brand new. It's a one owner truck. He had uh, driven this truck uh, only on weekends, vacations, that kind of thing. It has 55,000 original miles, all original paint, and the true beauty of it is that he had it Z-Bark rust proof. Let me show you that on this side over here. This is the original paint, 31 year old paint on this truck. See this? Z-Bark rust proof. Now you can buy all the body panels for one of these, so you can buy one rusted out and fix it yourself, but to find one like this, with the uh, floor boards on it, put the behind the rear seat, mint shape, no rust, original interior is in beautiful condition, you just don't find them like this. This one here has been tuned to perfection by one of our lead mechanics here, I'll go over that with you a little bit later. Interior is in excellent condition, I'll, I'll go as far as to say it's in mint condition, especially for the year. The body's in great shape, it's never been. Uh, beat on or abused. It was always stored indoors and it's just a fantastic little truck. Five-speed transmission. Like I said, this is an 87. I bought one brand new in 89. Same truck. So I know a little bit about these and I, I had a bunch of used ones that I ran throughout high school until I could afford to buy a new one when I was working and um, I've had these with over 200,000 miles on them that run like brand new. The engine on this is probably, I'm going to go as far as to say the engine on these Toyotas is one of the best four-cylinder motors ever made. There have been a lot of copies, but none have been better. This is the original factory stock Toyota 22R motor. Uh, we've upgraded it with a brand new Weber carburetor with a chrome air filter, and there's a whole story behind that. Brand new Optima battery, and I just put a set of four brand new top-of-the-line Michelin Defender all-season tires, which handle and ride like a dream. We uh, had, before I put the tires on, these aren't spray painted wheels. I sent these out, had these professionally sandblasted and powder coated. So the powder coated inside and out and inside the rim was clean and sandblasted. Brand new chrome um, studs, brand new um, filler. They were mounted, balanced, brand new Michelins all the way around. It also comes with a set of four, check it out over there in the cloud, four snow tires that have only one season on them. They're probably 90% trick on a set of rims. So. If you decide you want to run this in the winter, and again, this is a truck that hasn't been run much in the winter, just uh, very rarely, obviously with 55,000 miles on it, but you get the actual uh, snow tire set, four tires with the truck, which put them in the back if you're having a shift or if you pick it up and put them in the back. You also get the original carburetor. This is the carburetor that came out of the truck. And uh, when I got the truck, it ran beautifully when it warmed up, but the choke circuit was messed up. The original choke circuit, we fiddled with it. We, we messed around with it, we tried cleaning it, we tried adjusting all the settings, we spent a few hours on the carp. We finally threw in the towel and bought a brand new NOS Toyota carburetor. I think this was a little over $200. And uh, we, we this is the brand new NOS Toyota carburetor. We put this carb on. This is, again, it's a probably 30 year old carburetor. So, um, but it was NOS. And this one ran great when it was cold, but ran rough when it was warmed up. So we spent a bunch of time trying to dial this in 
I did a ton of research and um, I found out that, uh, that these original carbs aren't really designed to run on ethanol pump fuel. So uh, Weber has for seven years been making a Weber carb conversion kit and OEM carburetors. They make one specifically for this model. We purchased the Weber carb kit. Best decision I ever made. This We have a new Scion with the 22R. Actually, my son has one and I have one with two Scion XBs, which has the um, the evolution of the 22R engine. It's a four-cylinder engine. Very similar to this in there. The, this, this truck runs as good as a fuel-injected truck with this Weber carb conversion in it. Idles perfectly, pulls like a freight train, runs at highway speed all day long, gets really good fuel mileage, and the Weber carburetor is actually adjustable. You can modify it for your altitude. Uh, you can modify it for um, if you do any high performance work on the motor. It's a carb that has infinite adjustability and it's the best carb on the market today. So I spent close to a thousand dollars just getting the carburetor totally dialed in on it. It has a brand new set of $600 Michelin tires. We spent $200 power recording the wheels. Uh, and I just put the top of the line Optima battery in it. I really don't want to sell this truck, but we're two weeks away from finishing that big building there. We spent over six million dollars on it, and I'm broke. I need to uh, sell some of my prized possessions. This is one of them, and I hope it goes to a good home. Someone can really appreciate this. These trucks are absolutely bulletproof. This truck is an '87. It's 31 years old. Absolutely will last another 30 years. The um, the only addition to this truck that's not stock is a matching. Uh, it came with one mirror, so it has an, uh, a mirror on this side, so you can see when you're backing it up, which is great. The, again, the, look at the interior on this side. Just stunning. The, the, the original floor mat is in mint condition. The original seat has no uh, rips and tears on this side. There's one little beauty mark on the seat on the other side. The door panels are beautiful. No cracks in the dash. It has an Alpine stereo that the previous owner installed, but never finished hooking it up. So it's got an Alpine deck that you can have hooked up. Uh, it's got a cell phone pocket there. The original one has my cell phone in it. Um, the dash gauges are perfectly crisp and clear. 55,000 original miles. Fires right up. Everything works. All the all the lights and the horn. and Just a fantastic little truck. I, I'm in love with it. I hate to see it go. And it's original paint. Check out the um, check out the tailgate. When's the last time you see a 31 year old Toyota rolling down the road with original paint? Um, the original owner had the, the truck z -barted. I want to point out again, the z -bart rust proofing. What they do, they don't just they don't just spray the undercarriage, which they do that also, but they actually drill holes in the door. Right here, that's a Z Bart, it says Z Bart, has a Z Bart logo on it, right here, into the rocker panels, into the corner panels, into the cab corners, one, two, three holes, and they fill the body with a rust preventative uh, uh, coating. This is the original data plate. Look at this. December 1986, mint condition, data plates beautiful, seats in beautiful shape, steering wheels like new. Um, Horn works great. Dash is in beautiful shape. This is a truck that you can get in and drive cross country tomorrow. Runs perfectly. The original body panel, these are the original factory welds. That's what they look like right when they came out of the factory. In 89, it changed the, the, to a smoother uh, side body. There's a little bit of surface rust that um, they had put a rust preventative coating on, just sand it down so it wouldn't rust through. And it does have a little bit of a rust uh, on the rear corner right here. And, the, and unfortunately, the, the actual corner of the rocker corner actually from the dirt going up and collecting there did rot out so there's a little bit of rot right there not a big deal i have a vendor who can give us the um the, the uh, rocker lower, lower for 120 dollars for a pair of them have them mounted paint it to match i leave the rest of the paint alone because it's original they're only original ones inside the vent has a little bit of surface rust right here uh, when i called the guy who sells the panels i said i only just need the rocker panels he goes are you sure have you checked everything else out and i said yeah the truck is z-barded not driven in the winter very low miles he said Usually the guys order all the panels and have to redo everything. You'll save thousands in auto body work buying this one over one that's rusted out. Um, the bed's in mint shape. Uh, the tailgate works beautifully. Um, it's got a little bit of tiny, tiny bit of uh, surface uh, rust and one little hole right here on the uh, on the um, lift gate. Easily could be patched up by a welding shop, but to get one that's original like this, the original rear windows in mint shape. Top of the cab's in great shape. This quarter panel's in good shape. Again, this side, same thing. A little bit of rust right here, but um, the bed side's in excellent condition. A little bit of rust preventative uh, silver paint was put here. Um, rockers are in nice shape, nice and solid. A little bit of tiny little bit of uh, rust hole on the door, but um, check out the inside of the door panel. Look at this. The rocker's mid, as is the engine cab, the hood. The ins look at the inside of the door. Come on down here, Kenny. Can you see this? The bottom of the door is looks better than, than my 2002 Ford. 
So again, no miles on the truck, 55,000 miles, that's nothing. Now here's the best part. She runs and rides like brand new. So let's take her for a little road trip. I want to bring her up Mile Hill Road and show you how it pulls up on a hill with a four cylinder, climbs a hill like nothing, cruises at highway speed 65, 70 all day long. Five speed overdrive transmission. Let's take her for a rip, Kenny. So let's take this baby for a nice road trip. Again, 55,000 original miles. Just tuned up, brand new carburetor, brand new Michelin tires, brand new Optima. Top of them, we didn't cut any corners when we started working on it. The Optima battery is double the cost, triple the cost of a cheap battery, but you get what you pay for. Same thing with the Weber carb. Well, also, um, there's several different types of Weber carbs. There's the original one that's distributed by the Weber distributor Redline. Then there's a Chinese clone. So this is an original red line from the manufacturer, top of the line Weber carburetor. It's not a clone. And you can tell in the performance, it's just fantastic. Uh, Michelin tires, don't get any better than that. So again, I built this truck. I set this truck up for you know, the things I did to it was for us. We're gonna keep this as our shop truck. Um, you can't ask for a better vehicle to do errands with, to, uh, pick up motorcycles because you can put them right in the back put a couple couple small bikes in the back or one big one and as far as reliability in my opinion probably the most reliable one of the most reliable vehicles ever made is this truck right here it uh it has the um 22r engine which is extremely fuel efficient plenty of torque and power it's a four cylinder but it's got plenty of power lots of and you've got the five speed manual so there's a right gear for every situation uh, just can't say enough for good about the Toyotas. I've been riding these my whole life. Never, I've never had one of these engines blow on me, ever. I've had the bodies completely rot out. I've had ones that were so rusted. They had so much Bondo in them. I swear to God, they leaned to one side. But I used to drive them all, all over the Northeast racing motorcycles. Perfect vehicle to put a couple dirt bikes in the back and head to the track or the trails or whatever your thing is. So um, I hope it goes to a good home. Someone can appreciate it. Headliners, beautiful. The original rearview mirror is mint, and the gauges, the gauges are just, they look like, like brand new, like it just came out of the showroom yesterday, that's how nice they are. No scratches on the on the plastic, everything's bright and crisp and clear. Just a beautiful truck. Get her up on the highway. With the Michelin tiles, it, tires, it handles like a dream. You go ripping around this corner up here, it's like it's on rails. Huge, huge upgrade over the original. These came original. The original, the original factory stock spare tire is still underneath the bed. I'll have to show that to you. They were bias supply tires, a little bit smaller than the ones that are on there now. So these tires hook up. Watch this corner right here. I'm gonna scare everybody here. They just it just hooks up in this little S curve right here like a dream. Stock original suspension on it, and stock original factory exhaust is in excellent condition. Um, windshield wipers, windshield wiper washers, everything works perfect. One of the best parts about this truck, no power windows. Tiny cab, what do you need power windows for? You reach over and roll it down, they work like the day it came out of the shop. Now, if it had power windows, if it was a, one of the um, SR5 models, if it, if it had power windows, then you're gonna have issues, things break. Um, the older a vehicle is, the less power accessories you have, the better off you are. But it truly, truly handles like a like a brand new vehicle. And again, I'm comparing this to a Scion XB, which is a spiritual uh, successor of this. It's a five-speed transmission, the Scion. It is a four-cylinder 22R engine. And it feels, if you close your eyes, driving this feels very similar to a 2013 Scion XB. They really didn't change that much. The engine, transmission, running gear is very similar. Um, brakes work great. We haven't done any work on the brakes. They're, just, they're in excellent condition when we got them. I'm assuming that they were replaced at one point. It's got a foot. When it when it comes to you, it'll have a full tank, a 93 octane with stable. We put stable in here. So uh, we don't have to worry about the fuel going bad if you don't use it every day. We're gonna go up Mile Hill Road. So when we go underneath the bridge here, this is a one mile, 45 degree hill that uh, most gas engines will struggle a little bit on. This this vehicle is so light and so small, 
you know, they kind of got bloated a little bit. The new Hiluxes are kind of bloated in my opinion. They're almost as big as a, as a, a T100 used to be, uh, which was the bigger Toyota. But these original uh, Toyota pickups, the 87 and uh, the newer body style, if you want, the 89, they're super, super light. So this little four cylinder 22R engine, watch this. This is the hill right here. This carburetor, no, the the original carburetor and the OEM carburetor, the brand new one we put on there, we're doing 55 miles an hour right here, accelerating up the hill. So this is a extremely steep hill. I don't know if the camera does it justice, but uh, we're, we're coming up on traffic here because we're doing 60 miles an hour. Um, just fantastic, no climbing ability. That was only having, I haven't gone over half throttle yet. Just plenty of torque pulling you right up the hill. No road noise, other than the window being open. No rattles, no shakes, no shimmies. Nothing scary. It's, it's just on point. These new Michelins are rock solid. The steering wheel's perfectly straight. This is a vehicle that's not been abused by kids. It was owned by a 80 something year old guy who bought it brand new and it was a secondary mode of transportation. He was a big Crown Vic for cruising with the family and this was his weekend getaway vehicle or weekend doing a little work around the house, that kind of thing. Picking up lumber or whatever. I just put it in fifth gear going up the hill. This is the top of the hill right here. Mile Hill Road. Super, super steep hill. The steepest hill around. Shift to fifth coming up to the top at 55 miles an hour. Didn't slow down. I had to slow down for traffic. I would I could have easily topped the hill at 75. So we'll go we'll go back down the hill, take her out on the highway, and uh, show show you how she does on on the highway. The back roads obviously it's on point, handles beautifully, turns on a dime too. Look at this. You can turn around in a standard width roadway. Um, try that on your new Tundra. As much as I love my Tundra around town, this little Toyota pickup is on point. Everybody who's driven it at the shop absolutely loves it. I'm not sure what's wrong with this lady. I guess she's lost. Let's go around her. Bye bye, hun. So, second gear, give it a little bit of gas. Third gear, wind her out a little bit. Fourth gear, 55, 65. Fifth gear. We're doing uh, 70 miles an hour down by a low road. The beauty of the standard, put it in neutral, coast. Free transportation, we're getting a million miles of the gallon right now because we're not using any fuel, we're idling down the hill. So, I love driving the standard, you feel connected to the vehicle. Floor mats are, original factory floor mats are in beautiful shape, no holes. The original factory shifter looks like it just came out of the box as the fix it, the shifter boot. Um, I've seen a bunch of these for sale on eBay, uh, selling in the four to five thousand, fifty five hundred dollar range. I would say this is mechanically probably better than any ones I've seen come up. Um, so it's got to be worth that much or more. Good luck finding a nicer one. Downshift. I'll put it in fifth downshift a little bit. You can use the, the transmission as uh, engine braking too. There's a red light at the bottom of the hill. We're doing 50. Watch this. Slows right down. 30, 20. I'm not even halfway on the brakes. Fantastic, fantastic truck. I think I forgot to bring the dealer plate. I forgot to put the plate on the truck. <laughs> oh well. We know all the cops are on here, so I'm not too worried about it. We're legit. In traffic, the Weber carb, no backfires. It'll chug along at a snail's pace or take you down the highway at 80, whatever you want to do. Transmission, car.
carburation, rear end, shocks, brakes, everything works beautifully. Coming up the ramp here, 60 miles an hour fourth. Put her in the overdrive. All day long, 70. That's 70. Right there, 75. Smooth as can be. Coming up on some traffic here, I have to let off, but hey, look, we're doing almost 80 miles an hour, and there's plenty left. I'm gonna back off. Cruise all day long at highway speeds with the five speed overdrive. The Weber gets better fuel mileage in the stock car too. I'd venture to guess it's somewhere around 30 miles to the gallon. I haven't tested it. I mean, I don't really care. Uh, I buy these for reliability, longevity. Well, always, Kenny, haven't I told you since you were a kid these are the best trucks ever made? That's right. Yeah. And what are you driving now? A uh, little four-cylinder Scion. Scion XB. Yep. Same motor as this. Uh, heater works great, defroster works great, um, has a foot heat, foot and upper heat or just upper. Uh, you can do a fresh air intake, uh, which works great, or just the regular um, regular recirc. So it's actually too hot in here. It's the beauty of a small cab, everything heats up super, super quick. Dash is in beautiful shape. No cracks on the dash. Windshield wipers are beautiful, no rust on the wiper arms. Wiper blades are perfect. Did I leave anything out? Did I forget anything? I don't think so. Again, Mile Hill Road, 60 miles an hour at the top, 80 miles an hour on the highway. Rock solid, no shaking in the steering wheel. Uh, brakes beautifully. This is probably the best vehicle I own. I sold my 2014 Tundra for 32,500, and um, I'm driving a 99 GMC van that's really technically a piece of shit compared to this, but I, I need it for hauling our, our big trailer. This hauls, uh, this this engine will easily haul a five by eight or a six by 12 trailer. You can put a hitch on it. There is no hitch on it now, it's never towed. But we, we actually tow, behind our Scion XB, we tow a, a five by eight enclosed trailer. Actually, um, it's an all-aluminum featherlight trailer we paid a lot of money for. We paid close to eight grand for it. It's a pretty trick trailer with rims in the whole nine yards and a full wrap, but um, this will haul like it's not even back there. Especially with a standard transmission. I wouldn't want one of these with an automatic. Absolutely not. Uh, you lose a lot of power with the automatic. The standard gives you complete control over the engine RPM and the um, acceleration of the vehicle. Here we are in a little rush hour traffic and uh, stop and go, no problem. Carb rates beautifully. Like I said, this Weber carb is, 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 in my opinion, is as good as fuel injection. Maybe better because it can be modified and adjusted and uh, if you do any performance mods on the engine, it can be set up for that. It's a fully tunable carburetor. It was tuned by Lance Merton. He's a, a certified automobile technician. Like I said, we got close to $1,000 just into the carburetor and uh, tuning of the motor. We put close to, geez, I would say with the carburetor, tires, powder coating of the rims, and the um, brand new top of the line battery that's about two thousand dollars we invested into it on top of the purchase price so um, five grand's about our break-even point on it so um, hopefully hopefully uh, we can make a little bit of money on it the uh, proceeds are going to the New England Motorcycle Museum so we're a 5013c nonprofit that we're donating the um, any profits made on it so who knows maybe it'll, it'll bid up are uh, certainly a absolutely roadworthy turnkey vehicle ready to go we can get this shipped anywhere on the east coast um, using 50 mobile if you want to have it shipped uh, down to Florida 
Uh, we can ship this anywhere for you. I'll be sad to see it go. Uh, to, you know, to have a, a vehicle with 55,000 miles that's mechanically perfect with brand new tires, battery, power decoder rims that was thoroughly rust. Oh, one of the things I left out was um, when the wheels were off and we sent them out to power decode it, we had it up on jack stands and I had the, um, the guys in our detail shop sand down the frame and put a rust, rust a high quality uh, rust preventative paint, very thick coating of the paint on the frame. There's no rust through points on the frame anywhere. The frame's rock solid. This is just a rust preventative measure on top of the Z-Barding. So they painted the fender wells in the frame, which is something, Kenny, if you can do a quick video of that when we get out, yep. you can remember to do yep. a quick video of it. So. I mean, I would, I would put any of my kids in this vehicle and have them drive, drive it cross country and not worry a bit, uh, let alone myself. I mean, it's super, super comfortable. Um, the cab is, uh, everything's in reach. Plenty of storage in the back. One of the things I did when I was a kid, I put camper caps on the back of these, and I had a little hitch so I'd haul, haul a three-rail uh, three trailer, and I'd set up the back as a camper with a mattress in there, and it's a, it makes a perfect little camper for uh, weekend excursions to the beach. You've got a full uh, full length bed in there, so you can put your cooler in there and a mattress and uh, head out on a low cost vacation. Go anywhere in this thing. Just a joy to drive, suspension. No squeaking, no rattles, no uh, typical Japanese quality, no issues. And I don't expect there will be any for for some time, I don't think it needs, in my opinion, I don't think it needs anything. As long as you stay on the body, like the previous owner did, and anytime any rust pokes through, you sand it down, put a rust preventative coating on it, the body that arrests, it's kind of like chemotherapy for cancer, you know, it stops it. So, and that's been done sir, when the truck was brand new. <coughs> it had the full Z-Bart body protection package, which was, back then it was uh, close to $600 option. Um, so that was done brand new and then of course he kept up on the body and then when we got it we touched up the, any of the rusty areas with the rust preventative coating and we sanded and coated the frame with the high quality rust proof paint so and the rims were powder coated so it's good to go ready to go for another 30 years so we went we went up a, a really steep hill I'm gonna take you down a hill that's so steep they don't even make roads this steep anymore. It's not legal, but it's grandfathered in. This road's been here since the 1700s in the little city of Rockville. It's about as steep as a hill as you'll ever come by. And I, I would trust flying down the hill at 55 miles an hour and slam on the brakes. This thing will stop at the bottom like nothing. I don't know if you can hear. Uh, the fan's been on high the whole time. But if you can hear how quiet this motor is. like a kitten. Shifts, shifts perfectly like butter. Take a left here and zoom down the hill. This is Morrison Street in Rockville. Look how steep this is. It's like a ski luge. It's about a 150 foot drop in about 100 yards. And I'll coast down the hill. No engine braking. 30 miles an hour. No squeaking from the brakes, no protesting from the tires. Boom, dead stop at the bottom. Plenty of brakes to haul, trailer, whatever you want to do. Here we are back in the museum. Grand opening, April 21st. Yeah, if you if you buy the truck and you want to go come to the Brew Fest, I'll buy you a ticket. Um, April 21st, it's 40 bucks. And it's all the beer you can drink, all the food you can eat. It's gonna be 25 microbreweries here on the 11 acre site, a band, uh, 10 food vendors. So there'll be plenty of food, plenty of beer, it's from one o'clock to four o'clock, although the museum will be open from nine to five. So it's gonna be a fantastic event. Hope to see you at it. Give you a free tour of the museum when you get here too. So yeah, before we um wrap up the video, I just wanna have you do 
walk around one more time and take a look at the frame, show them the frames in mint condition with a fresh coat of paint on it. Bias ply tires were, uh, you know, um, not even close to it. Look at the tread pattern on the Michelin. Those really hook up. 024. Uh, we have connections for shipping on the East Coast, West Coast. We'd have to get some boats, but I'm sure we can ship anywhere on the East Coast very reasonably. So, or you can come pick it up, fly into Bradley Airport, and drive it home anywhere in the world. Drive this thing around the world if you want. They're bulletproof. So, well, if you made it this long in the video, thank you for listening, and uh, good luck bidding on the bike. I mean, on the on the truck. We don't sell very many trucks. Uh, we sell about, geez, 500 bikes a year. Uh, maybe one or two trucks. <laughs> They're ours, so I hate to see her go, but we need the money now that we've exhausted our sources on the resources on the museum. So good luck bidding on it. God bless America.